we can start. It's the first time we're doing this. Um, so it's also a way that usually, as a lot of you already know, often we have events on campus and we can't do that right now. So it's a good way for us to get together virtually and to continue to exchange, uh, maybe even after all of this is over. We'll have to see what happens. Um, so, Francesco, I know that. Um, Many of the people I can see on the list who have connected know you and I quite well already, um, but um, we don't know who else is joining us. So I thought it would be nice to start um, by asking you to say a few words about yourself and why you're so interested in visual communication, because you're going to talk to us all about the vis visual messaging around COVID-19. Yeah, so basically, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I am. Francesco Visconti, most of you know me, but some others don't. Uh, I'm the head of the media communications and photography department at Webster University Geneva. Uh, I, I have a background, uh, I studied archaeology at the beginning of my career, and then I moved to photography and, uh, and visual arts. And um, I worked at, a lot with images in the past, and then and then uh, uh, on a university level, uh, I teach um, photography courses, but dealing with, uh, with um, visual uh, communication. And lately, of course, uh, working on my PhD went even uh, deeper on uh, um, theory and a theory attached to the commun visual communication. So the semiotics came in. Semiotics this is what we're going to talk about today, basically, is the the study of signs and symbols, um, which are communicating a message. And uh, in most of the cases, this message is also attached to text. So we we'll see some, uh, uh, all of you, I'm sure, have seen a lot of images in these days, uh, uh, but not only these days. And the text attached to the image is quite important. I have seen a switch from uh, sometimes uh, before and now when an image was. Um, Touch the text. In these days uh, of visual communication on with our phones, uh, social media, the image is a, has a strong impact. Sometimes if you're, it's the drive to the text before then, um, uh, then uh, um, I was looking at, I, I see I'm not multitasking, as most of women are, I am not. So I was seeing someone sent a message. I, <laughs> anyways, so yes, uh, there's a sort of ingress, of course, in visual communication. How do you think that semiotics can help us to understand what's happening with the coronavirus and also how people are reacting to it? If we understand, what I, what, I, what I can say is that I noticed uh, and highlighted since everything started, I can tell you that since December, uh, well, beginning of January for us Europeans, I started collecting images because I found it was very interesting what was happening uh, in China first, and we we have an expert here about China, right, Dominique? And um, I was very interested in that, and I saw uh, the general reaction, my personal reaction, and a general reaction to images, uh, to what was happening uh, in China first. And then starting uh, reading newspapers, of course, in my case, mainly Italian newspapers, and then I found myself, as many Italians, in the middle, in the center, in the core of the pandemic, because everything started from things that started from Italy. So I don't know how many of you have seen these. This is an image from uh, January 31st. So it was um, a month after the official, they say the official beginning of pandemic in December 31st. That's what I've read. Um, When I saw this image, I was I was um, I was shocked because I my first impression was I didn't realize what was going on here. It was the text actually drove the text drove me in uh, uh, understanding what was going on. So what is interesting here is a series of symbols. If you take this image out of context, without knowing that it's coming from uh, related to the pandemic, it's complicated to understand it. My first impression was, uh, okay, I understand it comes, it comes from China because we have these signs. I don't know what's written there. Maybe someone can translate it for me. But for me, this is Chinese. Clearly. 
the good point for me was that I didn't know what was written there. But all the signs I can see here and the symbols, I mean, these texts are, are symbols, refer, bring me to a certain context. A certain uh, what Stuart Hall called uh, the consensus uh, background knowledge. So basically, I have the text, so China. I have the head of the guy in the foreground, and I can see, I can barely see his eyes, but putting it together with, uh, with the, the signs in the background, it's Chinese. And then he's on a bicycle, and the bicycle, you know, uh, it's kind of a general understanding that it's a symbol of Chinese. I, I mean, one of the most uh, elements that people share uh, in China, I think. That's my, my feeling. So the normal, you have a kind of an idea of a normal situation in the street. Then you have a mask, and the article was related to the pandemic. So the mask brought me immediately to the context of the pandemic. And then you have, you realize that you have someone behind laying down. And, uh, and, and for me, it was shocking. And uh, I didn't understand, I didn't grasp that, grasp that at the beginning. It was not a photograph of the body. It's a photograph taken from far with someone ignoring the body on the ground. So they, 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 I don't know if you saw this, but I can tell you that this man had died of a heart attack. And uh, nobody actually stopped to help him. He has been left uh, on the ground for um, minutes, we were saying about an hour, before the, uh, the ambulance came to pick him up, already dead. But Where it's symbols. It? Pardon me? Where was the photograph published? It was published, uh, if, you, if you Google it, you find it published almost everywhere. I found it on uh, La Repubblica, the Italian newspaper, and then, of course, on TGCom24. And now, if you go on Google, you find a lot, several versions of this image. But this is the image I found, and to me, it was striking. Because again, as I'm telling you, the composition following the rule of thirds attract your attention on the man with the bicycle. You have the red in the background, and of course, the red relates to the Communism, the Chinese flag, with the text in gold. So everything is related to that context. So we are, of course, appealing, referring to a certain context. But then something breaks the attention, and the guy in the background laying down brings you to the, to the context of pandemic. So that was, for me, the first impact I had with the pandemic, but it was far. It was far, it was in China. I don't know what was your reaction about the, the whole information, but for me it was like, uh, well, it's there, it's a Chinese thing. And I was not the only one, I think, uh, at least on Italian newspapers. Yeah. And how does that contrast with images that you've seen since? Over any other, can you share some other images that have caught your attention? Yeah. Uh, I have other images. Uh, after these, uh, the pandemic arrived to, well, started in Italy. And, uh, was interesting. I didn't include this in this conversation today, but I can tell you that it was a governor of uh, an Italian region who referred to uh, hygiene conditions in China related to the, the, the spread of pandemia, pandemic, uh, giving the sense that it was not really understood how um, what this was. And it's my perception that actually it was not really understood until the moment it was in the country. So coming from China, then to Italy, and then to the rest of Europe, and then to the UK, and then to the US, it's always kind of delayed. So the other images I've selected are these ones from La, La Repubblica. And uh, it is from the 24th of February, 2020. What do we have here? Uh, and this is interesting because um, I have to refer to what one of my students, Catherine, who's here today, and I want to mention her name, Catherine Holstein, uh, two weeks ago mentioned in one of our meetings in the class. She told me, she wrote actually, this pandemic is putting uh, uh, photographer, photographers in front of a dilemma. How is it possible to represent the invisible? How is it possible to represent something that it's not, uh, I mean, visible, uh, invisible in front of our eyes? Of course, if you have a microscope, you can see the virus, but it's been, uh, uh, labeled as a, as an enemy, but you cannot see him. Uh, but here, so what do we have? We have a soldier 
with, uh, with a gun, we have a mask, so the symbol of the virus, I mean the, the pandemic, and the soldiers or the army, and the symbol known in the world, I think. I mean, Milan, the capital of Lombardia, so where the pandemic started in Veneto and Lombardia. So this image uh, caught my attention, so it was brought immediately to the context of war. We are talking about war. This was on the Corriere della Sera uh, on the 25th, so the day after. It's not, it is not the same photograph, look. It's not the same person. But they use the same kind of concept. Soldier, with a gun, and you, see, you can still see people around, so there was not a lockdown yet. But the concept, of course, is connected to war. So we get into the point that that was the context, war. This is a great challenge. How can a photographer represent an invisible enemy? It was a, a very good question. Because with my students, we are dealing with images coming from all over the world. And uh, I want to show you another image that one of my other students, uh, uh, Renad, sorry, Renad, I misspelled your name here, <laughs> sent me from Saudi. You, you recognize this place, I guess. I have seen these place only on photographs, and I've seen it crowded and overcrowded, up to the point that I, was, I always thought, how can people breathe there? And when you see an image like this, it's quite astonishing because it's, uh, it's an empty place. So photographers started representing this um, uh, pandemic with a sense of isolation. So crowded places, unusually empty in a war context. So what do we have here? When you look at this image, we have the symbol of the Muslim religion with no Muslims. I mean, yes, we have people around, but we are no prayers. There are no um, people except an army. We have an army. They're all dressed in the same way. We have small tanks. Of course, they're not tanks. They're cleaning up the square. So they are fighting against something that is not visible. But to me, they're looking from far. They look like ants and, and an army. So we go back to the same point we've seen on the two photographs on the newspaper before, an army fighting against an invisible enemy. So this was quite striking for me. Oops. Francesco, is it possible to put the pictures a bit bigger, please, so we can see them better? Yes. Just give you a second to do that. Voila. Can you see it now? Better? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. That's a question. You see only the PowerPoint presentation, right? You don't see, because I can see you, Sarah, there on my left on the, on, on the screen, but you don't see yourself, right? Um, I can, yes, I can see, we can see people in small at the top and we can see your images. So that's, okay. that's perfect. Okay, okay, yeah. yes. okay. So, um, did you have that? You might like to mute that as well. Done. So, let me go to the next. Um, and then, um, this brought me to think again on symbols. You know this place, right? I guess everybody knows this place. Uh, I guess, can, can you, you can see this, right? So, it's really good. Yeah. So, this is St. Peter's Square, uh, Vatican. It was March 27th. So to me, these photographs, the next photographs you will see, will sign the history of photography, but not only of photography. These are the symbol of um, the pandemic, in my opinion. The symbols of the center of Christianity, empty. This was on March 27th. It was the Prey Urbi et Orbi, given by the Pope, to an empty square, this Pope front of an empty, empty square. And this was published on uh, um, all over the world. I saw today the Bam Bangkok News. This was on the first uh, page. But of course, it was on The Guardian, uh, New York Times, Italian newspapers. Um, this one image, this was, what, this was on New York, New York Times on uh, March 27th in the evening. Uh, there are some people around. 
Nvidia, always present, and uh, probably the assistant of the Pope, that is alone. Alone, train. And again, we go back to some of the images I've seen, isolation, nobody around except one person. Here we have the white man. And uh, when I call him the white man, it's interesting because um, this is the text he mentioned. And he brings everything on a biblical, uh, like on a saga level. Especially when you see uh, the second row, thick darkness has gathered over our squares, our streets, and our cities. This could be the beginning of the Lord of the Rings. This could be the beginning of Star Wars. This is a biblical. It brings everything on a, on a very, very um, strong level. And it's hitting everybody's imagination. So uh, it brings everything to, uh, to, to, um, to the level of imagination and fantasy. And the image uh, I selected for today, this is the image I actually think would be an historical image. The Pope alone, I mean, of course, we have a sense of composition. The Pope is on the right hand side. Uh, my students will know this. It's on the crossing of, the, of two of the lines of the rural thirds. We have a texture in the background. Everything is uh, monochromatic, uh, gray. So you spot the white uh, dot, Pope, because human uh, reaction, it's always like this. We are attracted by white areas in photographs or in visual arts in general. So in terms of composition, this image, I think, is well done. And I have photographers here joining me. I am pretty sure they agree with me about that. And I see them laughing now, so <laughs> smiling, not laughing. Uh, but actually, what I love is the fact that as soon as I saw this image and when I thought about the text, and trust me, this was the process. I read a text, thick darkness is gathering on our skies. My first reaction was thinking about the Lord of the Ring and Star Wars. And guess what? The day after, I found this on Facebook. What does this mean? This goes, this goes on a level, on a, on a, on a, okay, we, we, we can, we can, <laughs> we can smile and we can laugh. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice image, but it refers to, uh, to a deeper concept, uh, the idea that we are human beings, and, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure psychologists can find a lot of connection with this. I want to bring it on a level of photo theory, uh, try not to make it complicated. Mentioning two uh, academics, uh, Roland Barthes and Stuart Halls. Um, and Roland Barthes, uh, 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 was mentioning uh, uh, the fact that we have to know the historical context, but when we're talking about news, uh, news photographs, this historical context in most of the cases actually brings us to realize that these images are referring, referring to archetypical images, something that is part of our uh, background knowledge. It's not only uh, historical, so this refers to something uh, today, 2020, but it goes back to a general context, not only, not only um, Rome 2020 and the virus. This goes back to other ideas. And these ideas are connected to the need to find, um, to find a hero, to find a Someone to defend us in a war context because we are in a war context. I mean, it's not me talking about this. This is what I read on newspapers. The terminology we find is this we have an army, we have soldiers, we have, I mean, referring to other people as well. Then we can discuss if this is true or not. I don't want to go now in, in, in depth with this. But frankly, the images we are seeing are connected to war. And heroes. So this is, um, sorry, this is in Italian, but I'm going to be your translator on uh, La Repubblica again. Uh, this was uh, on the 5th of April, before um, Easter, a week before. And he's mentioning heroes. He's saying 
please look at the real heroes of these days. So he's using this term, heroes. So the hero in a war context. I'm going to touch uh, some of these points later uh, because this is connected to theories, the theory of the hero uh, with Joseph uh, Campbell uh, and uh, the saga. And, uh, you know, we can refer to the Royal Royal Ring, to, to Star Wars, to Harry Potter. We find always the same kind of, um, same kind of uh, structure. Uh, the, the, the hero who is a normal man. And then it's called uh, by a special situation to leave this uh, common world into the world of supernatural wonder. And of course, the virus situation is a supernatural wonder. So uh, the superhero, I mean, the normal person becomes a hero and he has to go through uh, a special situation where he finds um, difficulties he learns through experience. And then, uh, has to fight against uh, an enemy. You, I mean, thinking about the Road to the Ring, uh, Harry Potter, Star Wars, you can refer to more or less the dark, the darkness the Pope was referring to that was uh, recalled my attention. And then uh, we always have a mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, we have uh, Gandalf, Albus uh, Dumbledore. In this case, I don't know who's actually the mentor. <laughs> Yes, Max, uh, you look like <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, so, yes, he's referring to heroes. And this is what I found on uh, uh, social media a couple of days after. Uh, we have Iron Man. I love Iron Man. He's my special superhero. Uh, Captain America, Batman, and, and Spider Man. And you see the, the, the other hero with a mask in the middle. That's what Bob was referring to. That was actually, I don't know, but I'm, I'm sure you can confirm from other countries if this is repeated or not. I mean, I know here in Switzerland there was a moment in Geneva when everybody went outside to applaud, to support um, doctors. Same thing happened in Italy. And this is actually going through um, on the media, our heroes. And uh, uh, let me show you um, an interesting example on Instagram because it was uh, advertised, promoted on, uh, on newspapers. I started following Paolo Miranda, who is a nurse uh, working in a hospital in Cremona. Uh, very interesting photographs. You see, he has, um, this is already old. I took, a, I took a screenshot two days ago. Now he has uh, almost 40,000 40, followers. Uh, with 2,200 and something uh, uh, posts. So this morning, uh, um, it was interesting. I, it was a, a kind of um, exercise I played. I went through his uh, Instagram account and uh, I started looking at his posts uh, from uh, uh, a year ago, May until now. And uh, business people will be happy to, to hear some numbers. Um, uh, from May until uh, um, December 2019, the average of the likes uh, of his post were around uh, 20, 69 67.33, 67.46, and go on. And then in January, we had a slight increase, 100, February 195. Then in uh, uh, March, on the 14th, well, I can tell you in February, he took the first uh, photograph related to the coronavirus, which heated 513 uh, likes. In March, the average of the likes boomed up to 4,263. So from February, it was 195 to 4,263, where he actually made a statement on March 14th, on one post, he made a statement in Italian and English. From now on, and you see the image on uh, his image, uh, profile image, his self-portrait, he started following uh, what was happening in the hospital. So 
uh, this, uh, this is just uh, an analysis. It's not a critique at all. I like his photographs. I think they're very uh, strong. He was a photographer before as well. He was taking photographs before as well, of course, not of coronavirus, not of pandemic, but everything boomed up uh, with this kind of photograph, where he's talking about also heroes. Uh, he's using these, these terms, sometimes same mentioning someone, uh, citing someone who probably in the hospital said, uh, we are not heroes, we are only doing our work. But then, of course, we have a text here where he's saying, we'll be wearing scars, we'll have scars for a long time. And we have a scar here. And of course, a scar is related to physical fight or the consequence of a physical fight. So with a connection again to, to, to war, and this is from yesterday. So we are talking about something very, very recent. And uh, um, I don't think it's not even 24 hours. Um, and the text, uh, there are two photographs that you can see. This is the first one, and we have a mask as a superhero, because masks are hiding faces of superheroes. But behind the mask, as the text says here, we have the person. And here they're saying, we are not heroes, we are people. Behind the mask, there is always a person hidden. So um, this is the concept that, yes, we humans are referring to, we're looking always for uh, soldiers or heroes protecting us. And we found this connection. We found uh, superheroes. Of course, then um, the, the, the discussion is more complicated, but these are images that attract my attention. Uh, this is the uh, another series of images taken in Italy in the hospital in Bergamo. You know, Bergamo was one of the most uh, involved cities in the pandemic. And uh, if you go on Al Jazeera, I found it two days ago on Al Jazeera, a series of portraits. You have the link here. A series of photographs, uh, all these portraits with masks of soldiers. Mm, going to, <clears throat> sorry, going to, uh, to fight this war. So this is the last image I want to show you. I want to try to stay within the 30 minutes promised. Uh, it was uh, sent to me by Sara. Thank you, Sara. I think it's very strong. Of course, it's related to something iconic that we know, uh, the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci, which is in Milan. And then a composition done with people in the same position as, as um, the Last Supper. So, may the force be with you against the virus. I hope, uh, I hope uh, you're going to have questions. Uh, so I'm going to stop here sharing the presentation and see if you have questions uh, about what I talk about. If hey, Francesco. Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Hey, Vlad. So th Hi, this Vlad. was really great. I love looking at images. I love the images you selected. And I really like thinking about metaphors and the way we, we make analogies, right? I mean, as you mentioned, it, there is something very psychological in, uh, in the way we think, what our attention is drawn to, how we interpret images and so on, how we derive meaning. My question is, and this is something I've been thinking about, a reflection for myself, you know, all of these, this is the unfamiliar that we try to make familiar, right, through objectifying it into something, especially an unfamiliar that is foreign, we, we thought, you know, far away, China, you know, from a European point of view, by the way, and also in terms of biomedical knowledge that most of us probably don't have, we're, you know, to a high level. So the question is, if we anchor this, into an, a metaphor of fight and armies and invasion, which is obviously one of the, the most popular ways. And I, I really like your um, your idea of archetypes and the hero. I, I completely see that. Is it really helping us maybe to react to it or to treat it, you know, pragmatically? What if we actually encourage reactions that are inadequate? This is not really an army, right? I mean, it has elements of what an invasion might look like, transmission, we have to fight, but you're fighting on your sofa, in your sofa. You have no scars, you, you have toilet papers around. So there is a discrepancy there. Could we or should we find new metaphors or new anchorage for this? This is my question. You know, uh, this is a good question. I don't know if I'm the expert to answer to this question. Um, 
I, I can tell you what I've seen. I received a lot of memes since the beginning. I have been overwhelmed by memes. For the first time, my phone, which has also an extra memory card, was asking me, please empty me because I'm <laughs> overloaded uh, too much. Um, and this is actually, I think, uh, answering to one of your points that people are reacting uh, on imagination point of view. They're not going to fight, but they're uh, producing images to reflect their feelings. Uh, one of the images I've seen uh, was the um, great Lebowski laying down on the sofa and uh, two images, uh, uh, I mean, the same image, one next to the other. And on the top, the text said, uh, um, in 2019, a lazy guy, 2020, a hero, laying down on a sofa. So, um, I don't know, frankly, how to answer to your question. If people are actually reacting in a wrong way to what they should do. I mean, I, I, I don't think there is a right answer, right, in a way, but I'm, yeah, I'm just no, thinking that if we, if we anchor it as a, an invasion, does it help the quarantine? Does it co help cope? Does it hope, uh, help people, you know, stay, you know, it's, it's just an open question. It's, well, it's really, uh, let me, yeah. Let me ask you this <laughs> I, have a, I don't have an answer, but I can tell you what I've seen. So I started collecting uh, and looking at Italian newspapers since uh, uh, January, and I collected some of them. It would be nice to have a chat sometimes to talk about this, what I found. There's been an increase. Um, the, the, the first reaction of Italian media and one of the memes I found is interesting. Uh, said, um, in media, stat virus, which is of course from Latin. In in uh, in medio stat virtus. In the middle, you find virtue, and there's of course the transformation. In media, uh, you find the virus. In media, stat vi virus. And uh, um, the first reaction of Italian media was panic, 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 emergency, emergency. I can tell you that even the visuals. You had these flashing red lights, breaking news, breaking news, and telling you what's happening now, now, now. And uh, I think people reacted in the same way. It was a panic. So we are actually having an invasion. And then um, after, I would say like two, three weeks, the government started actually having a different reaction, say, we have to calm down, we have to calm down. And I think some phone calls arrived to newspapers. Because I can tell you from one hour to the other hour on the same newspapers, on, on, on different newspapers, but at the same time, all these red flashing light disappeared. And good news started popping up. Like, uh, uh, okay, yes, uh, there, there's still a um, pandemic going on, but there are some people healing. Uh, the good news are so, a different perception. So I think that what you were mentioning uh, is, is this really helping us to cope with the breakdown uh, or the lockdown uh, maybe it doesn't help I can tell you that it has a strong impact so what I can tell you as a visual I don't want to say expert but user and producer uh, images have a strong 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 and look at me strong impact I hope can I say something? yes Athena please so the way that I see it, the images that you showed, and I, I apologize, I needed to watch a news briefing and I missed the beginning um, to find out what our lockdown extension is. But the images that I saw, they seem to me more to be um, self-soothing than prescribing a way to defeat the virus itself. It's, you know, we know that this thing is out there and we can't do anything about it, but here's a way to feel better about nothing essentially that we can do it's not us it's these heroes and it's sort of tying it's our previous understanding of heroes with what now our current understanding is so it's it's more coping more self-soothing than finding a fix for it ourselves i think uh, um you know we are still in the middle of the pandemic so for me it's hard to, to go deeper because uh you can analyze things uh, afterwards but what I can tell you is that maybe, maybe there's also uh, an interest in letting people stay home and telling them at home because there's someone else fighting this battle. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe. Who 
knows. Can I Other questions you? or questions? Yes. What's striking in the images of the superheroes, like where you see um, Iron Man and then the medic, is that the heroes, you can't see their faces. Yeah, there's so, a mask, always. You can't see their faces. So what does that do? Does it dehumanize them? Does that make it easier for us to imagine these as somehow more than human, somehow less than human? Uh, because in some sense, we're ex these are people sacrificing themselves maybe for us, uh, which is a lot to ask of any of us. Maybe it's easier for us to see them as different in some way. I believe. Um, it's going to be, it does sort of other them, it anonymizes them. And I, it could be a negative in sort of not allowing us to relate to them as human beings, or it could be a positive in allowing us to see any person as being behind that mask. Absolutely. So I was thinking in terms of people might feel, we probably do feel, like if you see an anonymous medic versus if you imagine like, you know, somebody in my family who's a nurse and who has a and it's entirely different, including if you would imagine that person potentially becoming ill and sacrificing themselves um, on behalf of everyone else. Um, I would like to yeah. see a, a bit of a racial mix in the images. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you want to respond to Francesco? Otherwise, we can see if we have any questions to wrap up from anyone else. Is this a question? Yeah, did you want to respond? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think that uh, uh, in most of the images, I've seen about doctors and medicines and uh, nurses. Yes, we have masks. But then the second message is that uh, this is actually what's happening now. There's people behind these masks. So they are heroes, but they're human heroes. So it's a different concept of hero. So they're not superheroes. They are fighting against that battle. Uh, and the mask is probably protecting them more than, uh, but not protecting their anonymity, protecting from the virus. I think this is one of the issues happened to, in Italy, sending these are maybe not completely ready in terms of equipment, maybe, I don't know. But um, one of the things that is happening is that if you see the photographs by Paolo, Paolo Miranda and, uh, and others, they're removing their masks. So we see their faces. They are us. We are them. So we stay home and we fight our battle. They they fight our battle there. There was another interesting uh, image I selected, uh, but I, I I mean I I wanted to keep it on thirty minutes presentation. So uh, I apologize. Uh, there there was more I wanted to talk about as well. But um, there's an image I found. Uh, you can see it. It's in Italian. And it was, this is uh, you, uh, presented by Paolo Miranda on his uh, Instagram account. It says, uh, please fight for us and win for us. Combattete e vincete contro il virus. Fight and win against the virus. But for us, the concept is, and it was in front of the hospital. And uh, written as it was, and uh, as it was uh, uh, something you could use in a stadium, in a football match, because I didn't mention this, but Vlad could confirm this. Um, on a psychological point of view, we always need to find heroes. So in a war context, we found heroes in the past. In the Greek times, uh, there was mythology, I mean, Zeus, uh, Athena, uh, who actually were humanized. They had human characteristics. And then in no war context, I mean, for, of course, in Rome, you had gladiators, heroes. If you go to Pompeii, you find names scratched on the walls of their preferred superhero, I mean, the gladiator. We need to find heroes in our life. When we don't have a war, 
I had Batistuta, I had Maradona, I had Pelé, these great football players. So in a stadium, the new arena, you are actually following your superheroes, your heroes. Uh, so we always uh, are in need to find uh, leading person, guide somehow. And of course, this could go back on uh, when you are a, a child and you find, uh, but the, I leave this to Vlad and psychologists. Uh, Paula, did you want to make a comment as well? Francesco, it was very good selection, and especially the last one. I was very intrigued. I didn't see that one, Sarah. I'm going to go back to those two pictures, and especially because it's in Italy. But um, yeah, no, I, I think it's um, there are many things that you raise which are fantastic. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the absence of presence as a Catholic. Uh, spotted like how to portray the absence of presence, like how you can portray the invisible. Yeah, and that is um, a point. Yeah. yeah, it was a good point. And it's a, uh, it's a uh, that is that is something to to look into, like uh, how visual artists and from painting to photography have portrayed the absence of presence, and that's what the vi virus is. It's a, it's a, it's exactly that. And um, about the idea of heroes that you've um, talked about, I mean, uh, it's, um, I mean, I think the, the example you gave with the, the great Lebowski, it's fantastic because of course that there is this mask at angels in hospitals, but uh, actually uh, being at home is making you a hero as well, is how you can become part of this process. In a, and it's actually doing nothing, it's doing a lot, because that's how we can kill the virus. I mean, uh, take part in, and empower yourself. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's good for the idea of um, uh, empowering people, like uh, do this and cope with this, because you are part of the game. This is, this is very important. Yeah. And um, so it's, um, but uh, uh, my, my, my question and, uh, and actually the debate that has been on uh, in, the, in photography actually for, for my perspective is not, uh, there is also these issues about how to portray the situation and, uh, but also like, um, as you said, image has been the way to show, to, to story tell. I mean, it's not only because it's our time, but it has been the only way to portray the invisible. There is no words for this at the moment than imagery. But also, what will happen to, to our job after this? Because, uh, I mean, in photography, it's about being out there. And uh, when our work is actually changing for, I, you are in Switzerland, I am in France, uh, we are pretty much locked down, I mean, at 100%. So it's um, how can you be a visual professional when you are in a situation where you're locked down? How can you be commissioned to work when you, in times of coronavirus? I mean, uh, so there is a change in the business. There is a change in the market. It is, um, so there is new trends coming up. And uh, I'm not saying they're revolution because, as you said, we are right in the middle of things, so we cannot really see how the storm is taking us, but uh, we are living the story, but we are also being taken by it. And it's, um, so that is a, that is, that is, that's a, that's a, that's a debate, that's a, that's a food for thought. I think, uh, I think there's a, um, the, the point is, can be broadened and it's a change on journalism. Uh, there was an article on the Italian newspaper uh, a couple of days ago talking about how journalism is changing um not only uh, in the content in how much it needs to be uh, developed in the content and uh, on the same line i've seen another article uh, um, begging uh, social media not to share fake fake news uh, so there, there's a development around that I think what happened with Facebook uh, and uh, all this privacy uh, issue happening, uh, I mean, are still going on, of course. Uh, and how social media actually are now used to communicate even more uh, because of the emergency situation. It's, it's, it's a development of journalism as well. And that, of course, uh, raises a few questions about the role uh, of 
of journalism, photojournalism, how you're going to do that. 